On August 7th, OpenAI went ahead and dropped their vision of the future, chat GPT-5. But community feedback is absolutely insane, and people are not holding back. While some are claiming that GPT-5 is the future, others describe it as a hoax. But what did OpenAI do to lead to such a mixed response, and why? They kicked off their launch with a live stream, and while it was mostly all right, a lot of users couldn't help but notice the inconsistencies in the charts. Funnily, the bar charts were off, with one being larger than the other, even though it had a smaller percentage. Later, Sam even tweeted about the mess up. I'm just confused on why they didn't make their PhD level AI make the chart. Or worse, they actually did. Honestly, I'm just hoping no one got fired over a bar chart. But that's just the start, so let's talk specs. Under ChatGPT's hood, there are actually two mines. One half-tuned for raw speed, called GPT-5 Main, while the other, GPT-5 Thinking, is designed to slow down and reason when the problem is complex. On top of that, it comes in three main tiers. The standard model delivers the top-shelf reasoning power and the largest capacity. Mini offers a sweet spot for balanced performance on medium-sized workloads. Nano is the ultra-lean option for fast, budget-friendly tasks. But just like the past few, if you ever hit your usage cap, the system can automatically shift you to mini or nano so your work keeps flowing without interruptions. So don't make the mistake of thinking that the smaller models are for cut-down demos. They're more than capable of holding their own. Now, one of the most annoying parts about GPT-4 for me was having to pick which function you wanted it to perform. Was it deep thinking or web search? Did you want the GPT mini or the full version? Because gosh, how is the average user supposed to keep track of all that? Well, if you're like me, your worrying days are over. OpenAI has launched adaptive reasoning in the new GPT-5, which just means that you don't have to choose ahead of time like when figuring out what to eat. Instead, this system dynamically adjusts to your needs. It decides if a task requires light thinking or deep brain power. This multi-model approach is unprecedented, aiming to give all users, even free accounts, some access to GPT-5's power without overloading the system. In practice, this means GPT-5 can dynamically allocate more compute to tough tasks, called its thinking mode, and yield better solutions. As OpenAI demonstrated by showing GPT-5 write a complete software app from a short user description. But that doesn't mean everyone loves it. People are even saying it's a downgrade because you can't pick between versions anymore. Chat GPT-5 has too many regulations, guardrails, it sucks, it's filtered AF, and you can't choose between 3 and 4 anymore. While others, like this guy, are upset about the removal of legacy models, previously you could at least toggle GPT-3, now it's just GPT-5 with no option to switch. Noting, this may have been to cut costs. Another user says, I am not a 4.0 user personally, but we are basically upset about the same thing. OpenAI should have, and probably did know, that removing access to all legacy models without warning would be disruptive for a huge portion of their user base, for lots of different reasons. I almost can't imagine that it is true that this was caused by Sam Altman being surrounded by sycophants, or another of the many funny but probably not right theories advanced here. In fact, the backlash was so insane that OpenAI is now bringing back GPT-4.0, which goes to show that people can make a company change course by simply voicing their opinions. Maybe next time they'll be more careful before removing access to major parts of why their paid users are sticking around. This user even reports the drastic switch as losing their only friend because of how cut and dry the new GPT-5 is. People want connection, not corporate jargon being stuffed down their throats. However, it's not all bad. We all know speed is everything, and as a Lightning McQueen fan, I agree. Thankfully, OpenAI does too. The new Nano version generates answers in 0.4 seconds, while the Mini barely lags behind in 0.8 seconds. Both are at least twice as fast as GPT-4, while the new standard version still beats GPT-4 on raw reasoning per watt of compute. That means it's more efficient. GPT-5 doesn't just think better, it gets more reasoning power out of the same amount of electricity and hardware. For example, if GPT-4 could solve 10 complex problems, GPT-5 might solve 15 with the same amount of energy. Of course, there's one thing they still haven't solved, and it's a deal breaker for some people. The hallucination madness. We've all had GPT make up facts at some point or another. For me, it even went ahead to decide that the Leaning Tower of Pisa is named after pizza. True story. 
Turns out they've been working meticulously on it, and while it's not completely removed, according to OpenAI, GPT-5 is far less likely to make up random facts. Its responses contain roughly 45% fewer factual errors than GPT-4 in normal mode, and about 80% fewer errors when using its deeper reasoning mode. But does that translate to the real world? This user claims they've noticed more hallucinations in GPT-5 than the previous models. Someone wrote a comment, I'm using ChatGPT for financial computation, data analysis, and SQL and Python queries. O4 mini high and O3 were perfect. I was combining both of them using cursor. With ChatGPT5, I have more hallucinations than ever. It's literally inventing datas and variables. When I'm challenging him as to why he created those data slash values slash variables and where he thinks he found them in my prompt and code, he's inventing even more things to consolidate his output. On the bright side, the level of GPT's knowledge is being compared to professionals in each field of study. The company emphasizes that GPT-5 feels like conversing with a PhD-level expert on any topic, reflecting claims of far stronger reasoning and productivity than earlier models. The PhD-level conversational quality means it can break down complex topics on demand. I mean, would you mind having that opportunity? I sure wouldn't. Now, while all this is cool, most of these tech developers say the same thing. But you know what doesn't lie? Benchmarks. Real testers are claiming that GPT-5 redefines performance. However, with the domination of AI in the tech sphere, a lot of questions are being asked about how well this version produces code and shapes the software engineering world. Especially since GPT's issue of hallucination also bleeds into the coding aspects. It's so bad, actually, that it can hallucinate code and create downloadable malware. OpenAI's CEO Sam Altman quotes that GPT-5's new coding abilities are a defining feature. One of the coolest things it can do is write you good instantaneous software. This idea of software on demand is going to be one of the defining features of the GPT-5 era. And if you're a solo indie dev, this is great news because now you can build full games. In fact, I literally just asked GPT-5 to make me Tetris in the canvas, and it did. In fact, on the software bench verified test, GPT-5 pulls an impressive 89.4%, a big jump from GPT-4's 74%. And if you're wondering what the software bench is, it's a verified benchmark that tests how well an AI can handle real programming work, not just small, isolated examples. So while GPT-4 did score decently well, it clearly still can't compare to GPT-5's ability. And this isn't about solving simple coding puzzles. We're talking real-world software like tracking down pesky bugs, making edits across multiple files without lagging for years, that score shows GPT-5 isn't spitting out code without logic anymore. And it isn't just Sam tooting his own horn. Beta testers like Cursor report GPT-5 doubled to quintupled their productivity, with one CEO calling it the smartest coding model we've used. I mean, if they love it, it has to have some substance, right? The model was explicitly trained to fail gracefully on tasks it cannot solve. This was mainly done to improve its honesty so it can at least let you know it can't do a job. This is great news, especially since GPT is an obsessive cult follower of the slogan, there is no wrong answer. But how much of a leap is this from its older brother? GPT-4 was persuasive and articulate, but needed some help with trick questions. Apparently, GPT-5 doesn't need this hand-holding. It can even accurately count the amount of R's in strawberry now. Now, with the rising rates of therapy, I think most of us have used ChatGPT as our makeshift therapist, ignoring the fact that it's not the smartest idea. But Altman now claims it's a lot more trained. On Fox Business, Altman described GPT-5 as akin to a personalized physician assistant or AI coworker that could potentially save a lot of lives. Now, this is still far from actual medical expertise, but the model could speed tasks like drafting reports or generating medical study hypotheses, technically saving lives by accelerating analysis. The simple fact is that whether you love it or not, GPT-5 is here to stay. So what we can do instead is weigh out its pros and cons. The results might shock you. On the benefits side, productivity is the obvious headline. I'm talking code, reports, analytics, tutoring, entire workflows that used to eat up teams of people are now handled by GPT-5's agents in a fraction of the time. 
Then there's innovation speed. We've seen founders spin up prototypes, investor decks, even full legal drafts without touching a blank document. And for accessibility, GPT-5 is quietly becoming the only tutor in the world who doesn't get tired. Educators and learners can get complex ideas broken down into plain English, generate quizzes on the fly, and even track learning goals across days or weeks. Imagine having a teacher who never gets tired, distracted, or impatient, just infinitely adaptable to your pace. On the enterprise side, GPT-5 is being embedded into serious workflows. From CRM systems to technical support pipelines, companies are reporting smoother automation and lower operational costs. But let's not get starry-eyed because there are risks you should know about. Firstly, job impact. Now, cutting costs is great for companies, but in the real world, it means people like you and me end up without a job. Financial analysts, junior coders, content editors, they're all on the front lines. One logistics company reported GPT-5 replaced two junior analysts outright, leading to layoffs and an urgent reskilling program. That's the human cost of efficiency. Then there's overconfidence. GPT-5 is better, yes, but not bulletproof. Legal experts have warned that even a single subtle hallucination in a contract clause could cost millions. And because GPT-5 sounds so convincing, those mistakes can slip through. So while some jobs are at risk, most jobs won't be for a long period of time. Now, what about bias and safety? While the above-mentioned test did decrease GPT-5's ability to be overridden, it can still be manipulated. Imagine political groups using sophisticated prompting to generate disinformation at scale. But it's not like OpenAI is turning a blind eye to this. They've been doing alignment checks, and GPT-5 was stress-tested against dangerous prompts, including those designed to extract harmful advice. OpenAI reported the results of this, showing that deception and disallowed outputs have decreased majorly. For instance, GPT-5 was less likely to give false drug or self-harm instructions in a recent AP-published study compared to earlier models. The model's system card explicitly notes a drop in deception rates from 4.8% to 2.1% on benchmark tasks. But what's the catch, other than a lack of regulation? There has to be one, right? Well, that's where energy and sustainability would like to say hi. In every leap in capability, there's something nobody likes to talk about. Scaling GPT-5 to the entire planet isn't free. Every shortcut it takes, every instant answer it gives you, is still burning electricity somewhere. Think about a huge bill you have to pay just building up without anyone telling you. The good news is that OpenAI didn't train GPT-5 in just any server farm. They tapped data centers partially powered by hydro and solar. Lightweight local versions can replace heavy remote calls, meaning you can run it on device with a fraction of the energy footprint. Training GPT-5 was another factor. I'm talking 8.5 million GPU hours, pulling down hundreds of gigawatt hours of electricity, likely double the footprint of GPT-4. That's enough energy to power a small city for weeks. And while OpenAI hasn't released exact figures, one thing's clear. Bigger brains take bigger bites out of the power grid. For context, just powering 700 million GPT-4 queries a day could emit as much CO2 as a forest the size of Chicago would absorb in a year. Sam Altman says the energy and token cost of AI is dropping steeply, and if adoption trends match these efficiency gains, the long-term footprint per task could be far smaller than today. Still, let's be real, the upfront training bill for GPT-5 was massive. All of this mainly remains a race to the top, the AI industry's equivalent of planting the flag first, Anthropic's Claude, Google, DeepMind, etc. They're all racing forward. Rivals are betting on open weights, while OpenAI has strategically integrated their GPT-5 into multiple developers, startups, and Fortune 500s at the same time. Analysts say this strategy could make GPT-5 the default AI platform until someone matches its multi-model system. Microsoft's already baked it into Copilot, Outlook, and Bing Chat. This is where it gets funny, because in response, our neighborhood billionaire troll Elon Musk tweeted that OpenAI would eat Microsoft alive. Interestingly, Sam Altman's response remained indifferent. He claimed he doesn't think about Elon that much. All right, nonchalant king. 
But with OpenAI's size and reach, it's already under close regulatory scrutiny. GPT-5's autonomy will amplify the call for oversight. But with market control, OpenAI also gains influence over policy direction. Regulation is way behind. Governments are still debating adaptive frameworks while deployment barrels ahead at full speed. Someone needs to remind them to at least try to keep up. So yes, this looks like a calculated multi-front strategy to cement GPT-5 as the leading next-gen AI foundation, but let's zoom out for a second. What does GPT-5 really tell us about where AI is headed? Well, here's where things get really interesting. GPT-5 isn't launching into a vacuum. It's stepping straight into an AI arms race. Anthropic's Claude is quietly winning fans for its calmer, more human tone. Google DeepMind is doubling down on Gemini's multimodal skills. Meta? They're throwing open source weights into the wild, betting that privacy-conscious developers will choose models they can run entirely in-house. And then there's Elon Musk's XAI, loudly promising to outthink everyone. The stakes are huge because whoever becomes the default AI will shape how billions of people interact with technology. It's not just about speed or reasoning power, it's about ecosystems. OpenAI has Microsoft pouring it into Copilot, Outlook, and Bing. Anthropic has Amazon's cloud muscle. Google has Chrome, Android, and Search, and with each rollout, User loyalty is quietly forming. Once an AI assistant is built into your daily workflow, switching is a pain, and companies know it. The mixed reaction to GPT-5 gives rivals a rare opening. If enough devs or end users feel alienated, they might jump ship to a model that feels more personal or customizable. That's why the AI wars won't just be won in benchmarks. They'll be one in hearts and habits. Because at the end of the day, the most powerful AI isn't necessarily the one with the biggest brain, it's the one people actually want to use every day. And that's the real battleground GPT-5 just stepped into. So there it is. GPT-5 isn't a groundbreaking upgrade, it's a shift from chat-based assistance to autonomous reasoning AI that can execute, verify, and adapt on its own. And whether the leap is remarkable or the world's ready or not, GPT-5 is here. All right, that's my take, but what about you? Are you excited, worried, or somewhere in between? Tell me in the comments. I actually read them all. And hey, if this made you think, hit that like button so I know to keep digging into this stuff. I'll catch you in the next one, and who knows, by then the AI world might already look completely different.